So I'm going to introduce you to ACRA's program in Senegal. So ACRA is an Italian NGO, has been involved in uh, rural development the last 25 years. And only since uh, 2006, we do some wash interventions. So a little bit to tell you about the area. So this is Senegal, and we are in the southern region of Zingishor, which is actually a region in which there was a conflict, and this is one of the reasons why we have chosen this area. <coughs> so we'll talk a little bit about our sanitation program. So the entire uh, sanitation chain is involved in this program. So starting from collection, transport, reuse. Uh, our aim in the four uh, areas I've told you is to cover the 62% uh, sanitation rate. There's various type of technologies that are proposed to the beneficiaries. So the first one is the power flush latrine that everyone is familiar with. Second one is the double vault. And the, th the third one is the VIP. And we have the aqua preview latrine that we will talk later. Um, what, we're, what we will do now is to give two snapshots of our program to, to make you understand the challenges we face and maybe to, to get some advices. So the first one is a combination of CLTS and, and subsidy latrine. So um, what we did is to develop an approach with uh, RTI uh, in six uh, communities in which uh, RTI was originally carrying out CLTS. So what we did is that, um, uh, so what we did is that first, when there is an ODF approval, we have traditional latrines. And then we actually build, after one year, to the most uh, motivated individual, we build, we subsidize at 50% rate uh, an adequate latrine. So the second one is the problem we, the challenges we faced uh, managing aqua privy in a rural environment, which is usually aqua privy is, uh, is a septic tank and is usually carried out in uh, urban areas. So this is a little bit the, the design of the aqua privy. Um, well, we selected the, 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 the technologies, especially the MTIC technologies. We carried out several steps. So the first one was uh, focus groups in which we elaborated some uh, criteria. The second one was to, to in order to select the empty technologies. The second one was to do a willingness to pay analysis using contingent valuation. Then we did social service. Then we mapped the latrines using GIS. And we matched these uh, criteria for empty latrines with the new sanitation regulation. So what we did is a uh, multi-criteria selection tool that was kind of uh, flexible in the sense that uh, through all the steps, we could select the most appropriate emptying uh, technologies. So in the first steps, the, through the focus group, it seems like um, emptying latrine was a big problem because um, uh, people were not willing to to to, ex to, 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 con to be contaminated by sludge. So, in this, so, um, so they were they were willing to outsource the emptying process. Uh, in the second one, uh, when we carried out willingness to pay analysis, we s we saw that outsourcing was not possible. So we decided to switch from um, mechanical uh, removal to to uh, low-cost mechanical removal. And then we carried out some practical trials about emptying latrines, and we actually, uh, we had, um, we, we, we used a small motor pump to remove sludge. So in this case, this is kind of, this is a little bit to make you understand how we selected the emptying technologies. So another thing we did with the aqua preview, which can be interesting, is the water treatment plant. So what we're doing is the first one in Senegal. It's a sludge drying bed. So I don't know if you're familiar with, but the principle is of uh, drying the sludge and then um, 
reusing it in agriculture. So uh, usually rebeds are are used, but the, the maintenance cost was too high, and we didn't have enough maneuvers. The cost is about 19,000 euros, and the size is about 70 meters square, and the total size is about 700 meters square. So this is the, the drying plant. So as you can see here, there is an access way. Then sludge is, uh, is uh, put into a canal, and then it is diverted into two drying beds. So we did some adaptation, because it's the first one in a rural area. So the first one, since it's high density sludge, because people do not use enough water for their latrines, we had to correct the gradient and to reduce the pipe diameters to increase velocity. Then since uh, we're dealing with clay soil, what we had to do is to deepen the soak pit, because otherwise during the rainy season it was overflow. Then also because of heavy rains, we deepened the drying beds, so there are these two areas that you see over there. And then what we did is that we, we, we built the two areas further on the left for composting. So usually dry matter is used, but in this case we also we also are considering composting with uh, greens and other things. So regarding the first point, um, um, we think it's it's interesting um, to carry out with the C to to back up CLTS because in the beginning, uh, as you all know, uh, CLTS infrastructure collapse at the first rains. Well, with this system, what we do is that we back up the CLTS, CLTS intervention with an infrastructure. The second thing we're doing in small towns is uh, through the sludge treatment model that we have proposed, is to reuse it especially in agriculture and support sanitation as a business. So, oops. thank you to everyone. Hope I've been clear. Thank you.